Owls are creatures of our dreams, residing in mythic space, tugging at our subconscious. Totemic and beloved, we are drawn to their fierce but shadowy reputation. While few of us are ever lucky enough to see an owl in the wild, there are those who actively seek them out, whose curiosity compels them to dedicate their lives to discovering the secrets of these owls. In the wild spaces of Montana, the biologists of the Owl Research Institute spend their days actively studying the 15 owl species that can be found under the big sky through direct, hands-on science. This is our boreal owl project. So what we've done here is we check these boxes every year. And we've learned over the years that with the boreal owl, if you go up and you wrap the tree with a stick and you scratch it, that if they're in there, they'll look out 99% of the time. So uh, in checking these boxes here, we went up, wrapped on the tree. There she was. She popped out to look at us. Sometimes they'll pop out when they hear your approach as well. And we think it's probably just an adaptation to potential predation by pine martens. They're very forgiving in the sense that they watch you all the way. Matt climbed the ladder and took the fishing net and just put it right over the box, which is very typical, and they dive into the net. Then it's, you know, you have to kind of wrangle her a little bit in order to get her, you know, secured in the net and then down and out of the net. And then we banded her, or we actually didn't band her, she was banded, which was exciting. And uh, took some measurement data, took some feathers. And uh, weighed her. Check the box. Uh, she had four eggs. She had five voles in there, three redback voles and two other voles. We're not sure which ones yet. Probably a uh, long tail vole. And uh, so what we'll do now is we'll just keep back. We'll kind of estimate when we think the chicks will hatch. We've got her marked. And now we'll come back and we'll look at the chicks. We'll probably do some growth rate stuff, take some feathers or blood, and, um, and get them all banded before they leave the box. The Owl Research Institute studies many species, in this case, northern saw wet owls, using many similar techniques. Nests are inspected, feathers are collected, owls and their chicks are checked for bands and bands put on the legs if needed. They are weighed, and information is recorded for later interpretation. But the special experience of working with these birds is also appreciated. However, different owls have evolved for different niches, requiring different study techniques. For instance, short-eared owls live in grasslands and finding their nest requires four-wheelers dragging a long rope. The rope passes over the nest without damaging them, but the adults flush off the nest revealing its location. The nest location can then be marked for later study. Advances in technology allow for new opportunities to expand the types of information that can be collected. Miniaturized GPS backpacks are now small enough to safely fit onto an owl's back. No one really knows where these owls go from season to season, or even year to year. The opportunity to discover answers to questions like these are ever-present for independent scientists who are able to spend so much of their time in the field. With data sets decades deep, their work in the field is invaluable to the scientific literature. While funding is always a challenge and a limiting factor, these scientists have a passion for owls and a life lived in the field, and little discoveries that build over time to increase the overall knowledge of these amazing birds of prey.